In this video, I'll be running through 20 plus settings, keybinds, macros, and more to make your quality of life and experience in World of Warcraft better. First up, we'll be changing your movement keys. By default, pressing A and D will kind of spin your character on the spot, but what we're going to do is move strafe left and right to A and D. So that means pressing up will move your character forward, pressing A will move your character left, and in general, you don't really need those character turn left and right, so I just get rid of them in completely, and now I have Q and E as keybinds I can use for my character, which are really nice keybinds to press because they're right next to my fingers. It'll feel weird to get used to in the beginning, but once you do, you'll never go back, and any games that have similar movement, you'll be changing the strafe to be A and D as well. Next up, we'll be making use of the personal resource display. By default, I typically have this off because I don't want that HP bar there, it just doesn't look very good. But what we can do is use this to show our important buffs. Unfortunately, we don't have much control over what it's going to show us, but typically major DPS cooldowns or major healing cooldowns will be shown here. So what we're going to do is go to the settings for the personal resource. We're going to make sure the personal resource is turned on. We're going to hide our health from the personal resource, but we are going to show our personal buffs. So what that should do now is when you're in combat, you won't see the health bar portion, but when you pop a major cooldown, it should show that there. For some reason, it doesn't show defensives, but for Paladin, it shows wings. The majority of World of Warcraft players will spam a key, even if it's not available, just so it goes off that second it is available. But you've probably also been annoyed by the fact that your character will just say, I cannot do that yet, this spell is not ready. We can actually get rid of the sound portion of that error message, but we can't get rid of the text as easy. So to get rid of the sound, we're going to go to our settings, to audio, and just simply untick error speech. To get rid of the red text, however, though, you would need to get an add-on to get rid of it permanently. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the interact key. This is a newer feature to the game, but is really nice for people who like to do gathering, be it mining, herbing, or fishing. You've probably done a ton of mining or herbing in the past. You found those nodes that are in walls or under the ground, and you just can't reach them. And it's honestly insanely frustrating. But the interact key will allow you to get the majority, if not all, of those nodes that are kind of bugged under terrain. So first of all, we're going to enable this by going to our settings, go to the control settings, enable the interact key, but then also set a key bind for the interact key as well. Once those things are done, that's basically it. The interact key is good and ready to go. So now when you're flying around and you're looking for those herbing nodes or mining nodes and you find one that's under the ground, you can simply click the button. Your mouse doesn't need to be over the node anymore and your character will start mining it as long as it's in range. This feature gets even better for fishing because if you like to do a lot of fishing or you're grinding out some of the fishing mounts, you can actually fish without looking at the screen anymore. We can just do it purely with audio cues. The way that's going to work is we're going to head to somewhere we want to fish you're going to have one key bind for your fishing and then have another key bind for the interact key. So it's probably better to have them on the same button. So one of them be like N and then the other one be shift N and then you're not having to move your hand too much. So you'll throw out your fisher bobber, you'll wait for the sound and then you'll press your interact key. And it doesn't matter where your mouse is, you'll automatically loot the fish. With some console commands as well, we can improve the functionality of the interact key even more. For example, this first one, this soft target interact one, what this is going to do is increase the radius of how the interact will work. So by default, it's kind of in front of your character. But if we set this to two, it'll now work behind your character as well. And if you want to set this back, just turn it to zero or one, depending on your preferences. The next one will be the soft target interact range. And as it states, it's going to change the range that the interact key will work. And for fishing, you want this in the kind of 30 to 40 range. So you can increase this or decrease this depending on the content you're doing. And it's just going to give you a much smoother experience so you don't have any kind of range issues while you're fishing. If you've enjoyed the tip so far, then do consider subscribing because I am on the way to 100k subscribers and there will be cool stuff and giveaways along the way as well. This next one is a must if you haven't done this already and you're on a popular realm, and that is to set your chat window up with individual tabs. If you've been on a popular realm, you've probably seen it when you're in trade chat or services, you'll see a message and it's just gone. It's gone within a second, two seconds, the chat just goes so fast, especially with the services tab. So what we can do is actually split our chats up into individual windows because there's times where I still want to see trade or I want to see services, but I don't want to see it all the time. So it's kind of just annoying. So what we can do is right click on our general tab. We can create a new window and we can customize this by ticking the individual boxes to say what we want to show here. So for example, if we want one just to show services, we'd untick everything, we'd go to channels, we tick services specifically, and now that window is only going to show services in there. And then on our general tab, we now untick services, and that is gone from our general tab, and now is only found in our services tab. And you could do this for all sorts of things if you want one specifically for whispers, 
or you want one specifically for like party and guild chat and stuff like that you can do whatever you want you can even change the colors here too and while we're talking about the chat i wanted to talk about the fact that you can whisper yourself with just doing slash whisper and then your character name and then anything you type here will just be whispered directly to yourself as kind of like a private note so this is great if you want to put together like a shopping list of certain things you want to buy from the auction house or something you want to do you can just whisper yourself and if you have a specific tab for whispers that's going to stay around for the entire session unless you've got an add-on that will remember previous session chat boxes as well the work order menu does have a button you can click that will remember the specific materials you'll need but there are multiple other aspects of the game that doesn't have a feature like that so whispering yourself can definitely come in handy if you're using a mostly default UI, then when you press a button with a cooldown, you'll probably see the animation tick around for how long is going to be left before the ability is ready again. But this doesn't tell you specifically how long is left, so an ability with a long cooldown may seem like it's going to be up soon, but that could be 10 seconds away. What we can actually do though is in the options under action bars, there'll be an option to show numbers for cooldowns. So now you'll see the specific number that's left, so you'll know five seconds left until your button is available. Another option for more display clarity is to see your current target's total HP remaining and the percent remaining as well. Because by default, you're not going to have that information, and sometimes that can be a big difference. Knowing if the mob has 2% left or 100k versus a million, it's going to be quite a big difference in certain situations where you could fight for your life or you need to run. So to turn that on, we'll head to interface and to display. And here we'll see status text and you can switch it either to be both which will show you the hp remaining and the percent or you can have a specific one if you don't want both pieces of information next up we're going to talk about nameplates there's going to be two options here that you'll pretty much want to turn on the first one is always show and the reason for that is it's just going to show you the nameplate regardless of if you're in combat or not with them which is going to prevent you from body pulling stuff because sometimes you can be near a mob that you don't know and that nameplate is just going to give you that more visual clarity that it's actually there the next is to swap your nameplates to stacking because what that's going to do is instead of them all being kind of one block and it's hard to actually see which nameplate is which stacking is going to kind of make them split up a little bit and have them a bit more spread from each other making it a little bit easier to click that specific nameplate although making use of tab target as well to cycle through enemies is always going to be a useful option too before we move on to the macros and slash commands segment of the video i did quickly want to touch on the summon favorite mount button this is in your mount journal and it has been improved on a ton since dragonflight came out if you've got any mount favorited, make sure you have mounts kind of favorited for every kind of situation. So you want a dragon riding mount, you'll want an aquatic mount, and you'll want just a normal flying mount. And if you don't have any mounts favorited, what this is going to do is pull a mount specific for the content you're in. So if you're in the Dragon Isles and you use this button, it'll summon a dragon riding mount. But if you're under the water, it's going to summon an aquatic mount. And if you're in old world content, then it's going to pick you a flying mount. So this is really handy instead of having multiple mounts on your bar. It's just going to pick a mount at random that's suitable for the content you're doing. All right, now we're into the macros and slash commands section. And the first one I want to talk about is a classic one that gets brought up a lot. I still get questions today of how I am able to zoom out so far. And that is because of one of these slash commands. This slash command I'm showing you now, which will, all this stuff will be in the description down below anyway. What it's going to do is set your zoom to be further out. So once we put this command in and then you try to zoom out further, you're now going to be able to go out like one to two notches further away from your character. And this is great in certain situations, especially as Melo when you're fighting a big old boss. You're just going to get a lot more visual clarity of the room. By default, this is 1.9. So if you ever want to go back to what it should be, you'd put 1.9 in, press the macro again, zoom in, and then it'll lock you to kind of where that 1.9 range is. But we can go all the way up to 2.6. So if you want the maximum available zoom, and you can use the slash command for that. Next up, we're going to talk about macros for casting at player and casting at cursor. If you've never made a macro before, just press escape or you can do slash M. Click on macros and then create a new macro and you basically just put the text into the box. You give it a name, you pick it an icon. Although if you leave it default and you have a spell or an item in there, it'll pick the icon for that spell or item. And then you just drag it on your bar and you can use it as a normal spell. So back to the at player and at cursor macros. These are going to be great for spells like Death and Decay. Because by default, a spell like Death and Decay, you'll click it. You'll get the green circle. You got to click again. So there is a bit of a delay before that spell actually goes out. But for example, if we were to put Death and Decay into an at player macro, now when you click the button, it's going to put it directly under your feet central. So it's just going to be a big circle around you and you only have to click the button once instead of that second click. And the same if we do at cursor, instead what it's going to do is just plop it down wherever your cursor currently is placed. So you'll want to make sure your cursor is over the mobs that you want to target. 
you'll click the button and it's just going to throw it straight down wherever your cursor is. We can also make use of app player macros for spells like Tiger's Lust. If you've ever played a monk, you've probably been running around questing or whatever, and you've accidentally given your Tiger's Lust to other people. You don't want to do that. So what we can do instead is put Tiger's Lust into an app player macro and it will just always target it on you, regardless of who you're currently targeting. Also, if you're newer to creating macros, while you've got the kind of macro box active, if you shift click on a spell or an item or something in your bags, what it will do is automatically fill out that spell into the box so you don't have to type it out and you won't make any spelling mistakes this way either. If you're like me and you go back to old expansions for the mounts, the collectibles, all that kind of stuff, especially Shadowlands with the millions of mounts tied to Covenants, then you've probably been annoyed by the fact that the new Dragonflight kind of button replaces the old expansion feature buttons, but we can actually get those back with a slash command. So what we're going to do is create a macro with this slash run show garrison landing page and then the brackets, whatever number in there is what we want it to show basically. So if we have 111, that's going to show the Shadowlands menu. So it'll show us our covenant, which is great if you want to see what quests are available for the day or what covenant you even are. Or if you put it to two, it'll show the garrison UI, three for the class order hall from Legion and nine for the BFA stuff. If you're someone who plays a class with a lot of casting and you're not someone who's used to kind of move into interrupt casting, you probably died to trying to use a health pot or a health stone or something along those lines or a button to save yourself while you've got a cast going. And that's because the game kind of wants you to finish this cast before it'll do anything else. But we can create a macro to prevent that. So what we're going to do is have our new macro and the first line will be slash stop casting. The next line will be slash CQS. And that basically clears the current spell queue because the game kind of likes to queue up spells to help with latency and stuff. So that'll clear any spells it's kind of lined up next. And then you'll want to have your emergency button, be it your cooldown or your health stone, whatever it is on the last line. So now if you're mid cast and you want to use your health stone, you'll click this button. It'll stop your current cast. It'll clear any spells in the queue and it'll use your health stone, saving your life more times than you'll realize. If you're someone with a lot of add-ons or you like to use those older outdated add-ons that work just well enough, but they do error with certain things, then you probably got quite annoyed with LUA errors. And we can actually hide those, even though LUA errors are quite useful because they'll show you what's going wrong. If you know what's wrong and you're just trying to ignore it, then we can hide those for now and ignore the problem. And you can do that with a console command that is slash console script error zero. And that once you reload, will just hide LUA errors and you won't deal with them anymore. If you do want them back, we just change that zero to a one and they'll start reappearing once again. These next two macros are great if you're someone who does a lot of hunting for rares and things like that in zones, or you're just struggling to find specific mobs that you're targeting, then this is going to be kind of useful to you. So the first one is going to give us access to additional features on our minimap. So we'll use this script and one will kind of turn the additional features on and changing this to a zero will turn those features off. Once it's on, we'll click the little binocular next to the in the map. And now you'll be able to see a list of a ton of NPCs that we can track. And you'll also be able to turn on if you want to track focused mobs on the minimap. If you want to track the fact that whatever you're currently targeting is shown on the minimap, it's just going to give you a little bit more options. Focus is a great one because it's kind of a more noticeable box. So you'll be able to easily see whatever you're currently focusing. And then the follow up macro to this is going to be one for kind of targeting specific things. So we're going to make a macro with slash clear target, which will clear anything you're currently targeting. It'll do slash target, whatever it is you want to find. So in this case, we're trying to find this dune louse for some reason. And then we'll do slash target dead. So if you target something that's dead already, it's going to ignore that and then stop macro. And then finally, we can have run play sound and also set a right raid target. So what those two last ones are going to do is if you find the thing to target, it's going to play a sound and you can find a bunch of sounds on Wowhead. You just put in the code and you'll be able to change the sound to whatever you want. And then the set ray target will just kind of put an icon on that target as well. We could also follow this up with a slash focus as well, which is kind of handy because if you kind of fly over it fast, and you're targeting it for a moment, but then you go too far away, your focus has a bit of a further range than your target. So you'll still be able to kind of roughly see where it is now on the minimap. And these two macros together are great because if you're looking for something in particular, you're flying around, you can spam this macro. And now once you do target it, you're going to get that noise, you're going to get the icon, you're going to get the focus, and it's just going to allow you to not miss whatever it is you're hunting. The next one to bring up is going to be mouse over macros. And this is one that a lot of people know about nowadays, but just in case you didn't, I did want to bring it up. And a lot of add-ons kind of include this functionality just because of how useful it is. So what a mouse over macro is going to allow us to do is basically as it states, it's going to let us click a spell 
and we don't have to have a specific target for it to work. We just need to mouse over either the person's character or their unit or raid frame. This is going to be very useful because it's going to save you a click instead of having to click that person specifically and then heal them. Now you can just mouse over them, click, and it's all done within that one click. You can get mouse over macros that are quite advanced, but this one's quite straightforward. You just replace the name of the spell here with whatever it is you want to do. And if you also want it to be a damaging spell, we just change help out for harm, put in your damaging spell and it would work the same way. You just mouse over whatever you want to damage and it's going to do the damage to them. There is more stuff I wanted to include, but the video is getting kind of long. So I will finish off with a couple of toys that I use quite often and also an item that may make you out to be a hero at times. The first one up is going to be the Soft Foam Sword, which we can pick up from a toy vendor in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. And this is great if you do any kind of old world questing, because you probably come across a quest that's like, take this mob down to 20% health and then use an item. You just can't do that as a max level character. And the Soft Foam Sword, you'll click the mob, you'll use the toy, and now it'll take it down to 1 HP. The problem is this only works on trivial mobs, so if you're trying to do the same in a raid with a raid boss, you can't use the Soft Foam Sword anymore. So what we can do instead is use the Whole Body Shrinker. This is going to make you really small, and as you can see here with me hitting these low level mobs, it may seem like I'm still killing them, but if we look at the damage difference between me having the toy on and not having it, it's very, very big. So this is going to be great for doing damage to stuff that you would normally just about kill, but now you're not going to come close to killing it. We can pick this toy up as Horde only, but you can use it as Alliance. You'll either pick it up from the Echo Isles, depending on your current phasing, or if you've done Legion stuff, we can also pick it up from the Docks near Orgrima. Either way, purchase that, use it, and now you'll be able to use it on both of your characters. And then the final thing, the thing that could make you out to be a hero at times, is the Brazier of Awakening. We can pick this up very easily. It's not a toy, but it is something that will stay in your bags with kind of unlimited use. And we can pick this up from Tanan Jungle in Wall of the Draenor. You'll just come into this tent here. You'll pick up the item. And now what we can do is any kind of content we're doing, say a dungeon or a raid, or even if you're soloing and you know you're about to die or the group's about to die, we can throw this down and it's just going to resurrect someone. So this is great, especially if you're soloing stuff, you don't want to do a long run back. You can throw this down just before you die and it's going to resurrect you. It does have a fairly lengthy cooldown, I think of 30 minutes. But either way, it still has use and there's going to be times where you use this. People don't expect it, it resurrects them and then they're going to be like, whoa, how did you do that? And well, you'll seem kind of cool. So that does bring us to the end of this video. Hopefully after all those things we went through, you got some kind of value and information that you didn't know before and it's made your life better while playing World of Warcraft. Either way, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys.